All right, hi everyone. Um, today I'm going to be going over a couple of activities in the array deletions um, module in Leak Code's Explore category. Um, this is part of Arrays 101 Introductions to Data Structures. Um, you can see there's six chapters, and we're currently working on the third chapter, deleting items from an array. So we've just got this quick overview that talks about the three cases that in which you can delete an item from an array, deleting the last element of the array, um, which is this first one right here. We want to get rid of um, this item in index uh, 7 in this case, and then deleting the first element of the array, which is right here, where um, you want to delete index 0, and you've basically got to shift everything over. Um, and then the final case, which is deleting at any given index. Um, which is actually kind of the same thing as deleting at the first index. Um, the only difference is how much of the array you're going to shift. Um, so now let's go ahead and take a look at this first exercise here, remove element. Um, okay, so it says, given an array nums and a value val, remove all instances of that value in place, meaning we're not going to um, create a new array. We're just going to remove um, val wherever it occurs and return the new length. It says, do not allocate extra space for another array. You must do this by modifying the array in place with O1 extra memory, meaning um, constant memory, so variables or things like that that are not going to scale as n or the size of the input array increases. Um, the order of elements can be changed. It doesn't matter what you leave beyond the new length. Um, meaning, the array may be the original, original hypothetical length of 10, but um, if our new length is 7, we may have three values, whatever their value may be at the end. Um, All right, so here's our first example. Um, nums is three, two, two, three. Our value we need to remove is three, so the output should be two, two. Um, and it doesn't matter what's in the last two elements of the array because the array has a length of four. Um, it only matters that the first um, n elements minus the number of occurrences of val um, are the elements and don't have val in them. It says your function should return length 2. Okay, so it's going to return the new length with the first two elements of nums being 2. Um, it doesn't matter what you leave beyond the returned length. For example, if you return 2 with nums equals whatever, whatever your answer will be accepted. Here's another example. 0, 1, 2, 2, 3, 0, 4, 2, the value is 2, so we need to return 0, 1, 4, 0, 3, whatever. Um, and again, the order does not matter here. Uh, we may take in an array with zero elements, so we need to keep that in mind. And our upper bound on array size is 100. Um, no individual value is going to be more than 50. And the value that we're going to remove is not going to be more than 100, although I guess that's saying there could be a case in which we're not going to ever remove a value. Um, because the value is not present in the array. So, all right, thinking about how we can do this, um, we need to shift. I think we can do this with one pass through the array. I think we can do this by basically um, iterating through, and if the current value is the value that we're supposed to dispose of, move the value on the right over to the current position. And then we're going to skip over it and jump to the following one, um, where we're going to No, no, no. Um, so 
our values are never going to be um, I never values are never going to be negative, so we could use negative one as sort of a tracker. Um, so here's my initial thoughts that I'm going to talk through, and maybe this is not how we actually do it. Step through, step through each element beginning at zero. If value equals value to remove. then what we're going to do is, so, okay, if our value is the value that we need to remove, then we're going to move um, insert index plus one value to, to position i, to the current position, let's just say current position. All right, so that part makes sense. We're going to um, set the current value according to the next value to overwrite the value that's there. Um, so here's the part we need to consider. How then do we know that we should skip over observing the next value but do need to write to it? So let's keep our own internal length. I think I want to do that, keep our own internal length. All right, let's sort of actually start. OK, so we're going to keep, keep an internal length beginning at 0. Step through each element beginning at position zero. If value is value to remove, let's just um, insert i plus one value to the current position. And increment length. Um, OK. Skip over next position in iteration. So basically what we're doing here is we're sort of keep, we have two counters. We have a counter for um, the position that we're inserting into. We're basically building our own array. We're just using the existing array to do so because there's no expectation that it be sorted or anything like that. Um, so our length value is starting at zero because we have not found any values that we're going to, to keep yet. Um, but then every time we find one that uh, every time we find one that needs to be removed, we're going to take the position after it and move it over. Um, so that makes sense in that case. There's an edge case we need to think about. Um, if value is uh, not equal value to remove, insert it at let's just say next position. Okay, so I'm starting to starting to th think this can be simplified. So let's step through each element beginning at position zero. If the value is the value to remove, we're actually going to continue. If the value is not the value to remove, I'm going to insert it at the next position and then continue. Right? So let's think about this case right here. So we're going to start with position 0, length, z length. Well, let's see. Insert it at next position, increment, length. All right. So we're going to start at position 0, length 0. Position 0, length 
0. But because it's equal to our value to remove, we're going to um, advance, we're going to continue to position 1 length 0. Because it's not equal to our value to remove, we're going to update our length index position 0 with the current value and then increment it. So now this is going to become a 2 and this is going to be our next position that we're filling in. Um, then we're going to advance our, our loop here to position 3 length 2 and because it's not our value to remove then we're going to uh, put the 2 here. So yeah I think that, whoops didn't mean to look at the hint, I think that works so let's go ahead and start programming this. Um, so our length is going to be 0. Let's call this p for position, just so we don't confuse ourselves. Well, we can call this index. Um, while it's less than... Um, length, we're going to increment it. So let's do our case here. If nums i is equal to val, continue. Otherwise, um, nums length is going to be, we're going to assign to it nums i, and then we're going to increment the length. Right? And then we're going to return the length. Because again, it doesn't matter what's in our array afterwards. All that matters is what the initial length values are. So the initial two values are 2, 2 in this case. The initial five values contain, and they don't have to be ordered. They have to contain 0, 1, 4, 0, 3, whatever. So this is a pretty simple modify in place. So let's see how this works. Yep. My answer is 2, 2. Okay, so let's do some custom test cases just to make sure um, no values. Oh, it's already finished. And let's do this test case. We're going to remove the value 2. Whoops. So again, the order doesn't matter. 304403, whoops, whoa. Not what I meant to do. Um, so we've met the criteria, and let's submit it. All right, was accepted. Oh, I should have gone, uh, runtime beats 18% of TypeScript submissions. Hmm. Trying to think if there's a way we could optimize it to not have to iterate through the entire array. It's only O N. Um but no. I guess sorting it, maybe. So we're right in the middle on well no. Seventy six percent tile for memory, but it is slower. So let's Go back, take a look at the hints just to make sure there's no better way we could do this. Um, hint number one, modify the array in place, and it also says the element beyond the new length of the array can be anything. Given an element, we need to remove all the occurrences of it from an array. We don't technically need to remove that. We don't technically need to remove that element per se, right? So basically they're hinting at moving it, shifting it. Whoops. We can move all the occurrences of this element to the end of the array. Use two pointers. Move the element to be removed to the end of the array. This is achieved by swapping the element with the last element of the array. So this is kind of like an inverse of what we did. So if we're supposed to remove three here, then we're just keeping track of the last position in the array that we've 
stored our junk value to. And we're doing a, a swap of the junk value. Um, so in this case, we would iterate through no value, no junk value, junk value. Then we're going to, yeah, so I guess you could bail out of this a little earlier. In this case, you could, you could stop here. Um, so it's slightly faster, it's still O of N, but like, it's almost exactly the same. We're just doing it in a different way. Yet another direction of thought is to consider the elements to be removed as non-existent. In a single pass, if we keep copying the visible elements in place, that should also solve this problem for us. That's what we did. So if they've got that in their hint, I'm happy with it. Let's look at the solution just to see if there's anything else recommended. So solution number one, two pointers. Um, o of n, space complexity, constant. Um, since this question is asking us to remove all elements of the given value in place, we must handle it with no extra space or constant extra space. How to solve it? We can keep two pointers, i and j, where i is the slow runner while j is the fast runner. I think this is kind of what we did. So, yeah. So just swap here. i equals 0 is our length equals 0. Uh, yeah, this is... If it's not equal to the value, then we're going to, yeah, this is exactly our solution. Um, yeah, so two pointers when elements to remove are rare. Um, it says, sorry, now consider the case where the array contains few elements to remove. For example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 5, 4, value equals 4. The previous algorithm will do unnecessary copy operations of the first four elements. Um, another example is 4, 1, 2, 3, 5. It is unnecessary to move elements 1, 2, 3, 5, one step left. As the problem description mentions, the order of the elements could be changed. So that's true. We're copying every element. Um, When we encounter nums i equals val, we can swap the current element out to the last element and disclose the last one. This essentially reduces the array size by one. Yeah. So it is more efficient. It is more efficient, slightly. That's probably why we ended up um, not as time efficient as we wanted to be. But our solution is still open, so I'm satisfied with it. Um, let's go back and do the next one. All right, deleting items from an array, remove duplicates from sorted array. Well, crap. So it just mentioned in the solution for remove element that the solution was similar to the solution for remove duplicates from sorted array, but that's okay. Um, given a sorted array nums, um, remove the duplicates in place such that each element appears only once and returns the new length. Do not allocate extra space for another array. We're going to do it in place just like the last one. So we're removing duplicate values and returning the new length. Um, clarification, okay, no, um, one, one, two, so we should get one, two. Your function should return length equals two with the first two elements and numbers being one and two respectively. It doesn't matter what you leave beyond the return length. So the array is sorted. That's the, the key here. So, um, say that this is one, two, three, four, five. Once we hit element two, we're not gonna see one again, so we don't need to keep track of whether or not we've seen a particular value or do anything tricky like that. It's real simple. So we can just step through. Um, 
and have our current position. We're basically doing the exact same thing we just did for the last one. So we're keeping ah, error body syntax. All right. So our length is going to be zero. So what we're basically going to do is check of the last value we inserted. Let's all right, let's say if length and to make sure that we don't do this comparison that this doesn't match when length is zero. So if length and nums length minus one equals nums i then we're going to continue because this is a duplicate. So now we're going to set nums length equal to nums i. And we're going to increment length. So in this case here, 0, 0. So length 0, index 0. Um, Length zero, sorry, length zero, index zero, the value is zero, and because length is false, we're going to jump down here and set position zero equal to zero, and we're going to increment our length so that length is up here. So now length is one, position is one, but we're going to check um, if the previous thing we inserted was is equal to the current value, because if so, it's a duplicate, then we're going to move on. So we're basically discarding that. So it's the same thing as what we just did. It's exactly the same. Um, the downside is that we do unnecessary, well, no, we're, we're not doing unnecessary copies in this case because the element, sorry, the array has to remain sorted. Um, so yeah, the copies are not unnecessary in this case. So that should be it. So let's run our test case, 112. This should return 12. No, it didn't. No, it did. It did. Because it says, again, um, it says in here it doesn't, don't care about, yeah, it, uh, it doesn't matter what you leave beyond the return length. So this extra two right here doesn't matter. That's fine. So let's do this other test case it provides for us. Um, so again, we've got some extra on the end, but that's fine. Two, two, three, three, four. Yep. Um, and then let's do the case where let's just be safe, test it with one value. And then we're also going to test it with um, no value. And it should behave just fine. All right, submitting it. I'm curious to see if there's a more efficient solution to this one. Wow, wrong answer. That is not what it said. Your function should return length equals two Ah, uh, you think that's, think that's why? Your function should return length equals two with the first two elements of nums being one and two respectively. It doesn't matter what you leave beyond the return to length. Okay, so, yep, dang it. I have a wrong submission now because it says to return the length and I didn't return the length. Um, so basically, this would have been perfectly fine if I had returned the length. I wish I would have caught that in the evaluation before I submitted it, but that's okay. I didn't read the details clearly enough. Your runtime beats 98% of TypeScript, 98.77% of TypeScript submissions. 
Remembering usage beats 45, whatever, I had two variables. Nothing I can do there. Um, cool. Well, one wrong answer. Oh well, it's okay, it happens. Um, but yep, that was arrays 101. That was deleting items from an array. Um, next video I'll do, we'll be searching for items in an array. Um, about one, two, three, four, five, six, about halfway done with arrays 101. So, all right, thank you.